Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, fighting flares up again between Israel and Hamas after a seven-day ceasefire broke down. More on how both sides are blaming each other and what U.S. officials are saying. And we'll hear from one Southern Kentucky Circuit judge as she reacts to the death of former U.S. Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Plus, we are tracking rain chances to continue into this weekend. Your first alert forecast coming up as Mountain News at 530 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Huntsley. Israeli airstrikes pummeled Gaza today following a week-long ceasefire with Hamas. Both sides accused the other of breaking the ceasefire terms. As CBS's Bradley Blackburn explains, Israel is now warning civilians to leave parts of southern Gaza. Israeli military flares lit up the night sky over Gaza after a day of heavy bombardment. Airstrikes obliterated buildings in southern Gaza, an already congested area where hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have relocated to avoid intense fighting in the north. Gaza health officials say nearly 200 people were killed and approximately 600 were injured, overwhelming hospitals. <laughs> this Palestinian girl cries, I don't know where my older brother is. Israel blames the resumption of fighting on Hamas. Unfortunately, Hamas decided to terminate the pause by failing to release all the kidnapped women as it was obligated to do so and kidnapped children and by resuming rocket fire. A spokesperson for Hamas blames Israel, saying its leaders rejected multiple ideas put forward by mediators to extend the ceasefire. The seven-day pause in fighting allowed for the release of more than 100 hostages held by Hamas and 200 Palestinians who were imprisoned in Israel. Before leaving the Middle East, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also blamed Hamas for breaking the ceasefire and praised Israel for taking steps to protect civilians. Israel's already moved out on, uh, on parts of that, including uh, sending out information, making it clear where people could be in safe areas in, uh, in Gaza. Israel published a numbered evacuation map of Gaza and told residents to know their number in case of an evacuation. It's not clear how Israel plans to alert residents, and with large swaths of Gaza now in ruins, there's also the question of where evacuees would go. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. U.S. officials say Israel has agreed to let a small amount of aid into Gaza after blocking aid earlier in the day as the fighting resumed. We are tracking some cloudy, also mainly dry weather to continue into your Friday evening. Here's a live look from the WYNT studio. We are cloudy, that current temperature also above average at 54 degrees over in Perry County. Most of us in the middle to upper 50s at this hour, up to 54 in Pikeville, also Jackson, 57 for Irvin and 56 over in London at this hour. So once again, we are above average and more mild weather is on the way as we go into this evening, also tonight. But up on first alert pinpoint Doppler, we are tracking some drier conditions across the mountains after a soggy start to the morning. Only a small chance of a few spotty showers into this evening. Also tonight, zooming into portions of Lee County, also into Wise County in Southwest Virginia. A few spotty sprinkles, but again, nothing too heavy, and most of us are dry as we go into tonight. But those rain chances do increase once again into this weekend. Not going to rain 24-7, but those off and on showers are possible, and also tracking some more above average weather into this weekend. Highs back in the upper 50s and lower 60s, but be sure to enjoy that because once again, we are cooler into next week. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? Cameron, thank you. The Supreme Court announced retired Associate Justice Sandra Day O'Connor died this morning in Phoenix, Arizona at age 93 after a long illness. O'Connor was the first female justice to serve on the high court and her appointment in the early 1980s was regarded as a major milestone for women. CBS's Weijia Zhang takes a look back at her life. I will do my best to serve the court. President Ronald Reagan put a crack in the glass ceiling when he chose Sandra Day O'Connor to serve on the nation's highest court. I will send to the Senate the nomination of Judge Sandra Day O'Connor of Arizona Court of Appeals for confirmation as an Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. 
The U.S. Senate unanimously confirmed her. It's all right to be the first to do something, but I didn't want to be the last woman on the Supreme Court. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> She served for 24 years, paving the way for other female justices, four currently serving on the court. Born in El Paso, Texas during the Great Depression, O'Connor grew up on an Arizona cattle ranch. She graduated from Stanford with degrees in economics and law. She briefly dated William Rehnquist, who would eventually become Chief Justice of the United States before marrying John J. O'Connor III. When no law firm would hire her because she was a woman, O'Connor turned to public service. After raising a family, she got into politics and caught the eye of the White House. She is truly a person for all seasons, possessing those unique qualities of temperament, fairness, intellectual capacity, and devotion to the public good, which have characterized the 101 brethren who have preceded her. A moderate conservative who personally opposed abortion, O'Connor's key swing votes preserved Roe v. Wade. She successfully fought breast cancer in 1988. It was her husband's declining health that led to her resignation from the court in 2006. After stepping down, she devoted her life to teaching young people how government works. Most of our native-born Americans can't answer all the questions that we require of people from other countries who are becoming citizens. And her legal career wasn't over. Sandra Day O'Connor continued hearing cases on a part-time basis as a visiting judge. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Washington. O'Connor said one of her big disappointments was that the Supreme Court was held in less high esteem through the years after controversial rulings such as the Bush-Gore presidential decision. One circuit judge serving in Southern Kentucky is reacting to the death of O'Connor. Teresa Whitaker serves as circuit judge for Rock Castle, Lincoln, and Pulaski counties. She says O'Connor broke a lot of barriers for women attorneys and judges and was an inspiration to follow. Whitaker also says there was a lot of pressure on O'Connor because if she failed, then it spelled doom for other women after her. It's amazing that it took that long, but him making that first step and appointing her to the bench. And then she had to carry the torch because every eye was on her. And if she messed up, then it would have been problematic in the future. Whitaker says O'Connor had a way that she handled herself and treated people while on the Supreme Court. And she says she has also tried to follow the same example and attributes. Lawyers at a hearing in the Georgia election subversion case made arguments about the fake elector scheme today. Georgia GOP Chairman David Schaefer's team is leading the arguments. He was one of the reported fake electors who tried to overturn Donald Trump's defeat in Georgia. His lawyers say the fake electors were not actually fake and were instead contingent electors because Trump was still contesting the results. In an unusual matchup, Florida Governor and Presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis and California Governor Gavin Newsom faced off in a primetime debate last night on Fox News. It gave voters a window into an alternative political universe in which President Biden and former President Trump were not on course for a 2024 rematch of the 2020 presidential race. CNN Washington correspondent Julia Bimbrook has more. There's one thing in closing that we have in common is neither of us will be the nominee for our party in 2024. Well, we're going to hear during this highly unusual event moderated by Fox News host Sean Hannity and dubbed the great red state versus blue state debate. Newsom went to bat for the Biden administration while DeSantis used the opportunity to be seen as a leader for Republicans. The two went back and forth on issues like immigration, abortion rights and the economy. He thinks Biden and Harris have done a great job. He thinks the economy is working because of their policies for Americans, and they are not. And so what California represents is the Biden-Harris agenda on steroids. Here's a guy who celebrated Bidenomics just this week, celebrating $28 million that came into your state because of the Chips and Science Act. While some questioned what DeSantis had to gain by taking on someone who is not in the presidential race, he says it was the right decision for his campaign. I'm in a race where 
one candidate gets a disproportionate amount of media coverage. And so I have to be able to, to get my message out. Republican candidates signed an exclusivity pledge, meaning they can only participate in presidential debates sanctioned by the party. A source familiar with the deliberations says party officials expect to consider loosening those rules next week. Reporting in Washington, I'm Julia Benbrook. Well, more on that now. The RNC may soon allow unsanctioned debate. Sources familiar with the deliberations claim GOP officials are expected to consider a proposal next week that would permit candidates to take part in presidential debates not approved by the party. If adopted, the change could lead to more debates being held ahead of the early nominating contests in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina, including the potential for smaller one-on-one -on -one debates. The House voted to expel GOP Representative George Santos regarding ethics violations earlier today. The vote to expel was 311 to 114, easily clearing the two-thirds majority required. House Republican leaders opposed removing Santos, whose departure leaves them with a razor-thin majority. In the end, though, 105 GOP lawmakers sided with nearly all Democrats to expel him. Look, nobody takes any joy in this. Uh, this is obviously uh, a somewhat historic moment, uh, unprecedented. Um, and that is uh, the, the election of George Santos in a nutshell. Are you concerned um, about that? I, I fundamentally believe uh, he's unfit to serve in public office, uh, whether it was dog catcher in his local community or here in the halls of Congress. New York will now hold a special election to fill Santos's seat. That vote is expected to occur within the next 90 days. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, one men's tennis star is returning to competition after taking a year off. Plus, keep the rain gear closed for this weekend as more showers are possible, timing out those rain chances after this break.